Hey everyone, Kachi Vester back to another video for today. So let's talk about Amazon again. It has lost around 50% of its value this year, just like many other stocks. But since Amazon was so big, losing 50% of its value was a pretty big deal. Now in this video, I'm going to talk about some new price targets with regards to Amazon, some news related to AWS, the current state of, let's say, the fundamentals of the company, and of course, we have to talk a bit about the Nike earnings report because that might tell us what might happen for other companies. At the time of making this video, the stock is up and I want to talk about the stock. Nike is up around 10, 11% or so when I'm filming this video. And the main reason is because of this. They beat on earnings per share. They also beat on revenue as well. They top the estimates for gross margin, even though that decreased 300 basis points to 42.9%. Now, direct sales were up $5.4 billion, up 16% on a reported basis and up 25% on a currency neutral basis. Nike brand digital sales increased 25% on a reported basis or 34% on a currency neutral basis. Now, overall, second quarter revenue were $13.3 billion, up 17% compared to the prior year and up 27% on a currency neutral basis. Now, it all sounds great, but it's also some, let's say, negative news, but I'll put a spin on that in a second. And if you've been following the company, you probably know exactly what I'm talking about, and that's inventories. So inventories for Nike were $9.3 billion, that's up 43% year over year which means if you're looking for some Nike shoes or whatnot, probably go to the store and they might be on sale. Now, although that number year over year might look extremely worrying, which of course it is, it's up 43% year over year, it's actually down quarter over quarter. So maybe inventories might have peaked. And that's also what management have told us. Last time that was $9.7 billion. We're now at 9.7 $3 billion. So maybe, maybe that might have peaked. And who knows, maybe the overall market, the sentiment has bottomed. That's why it's up 11% or so. Of course, that might change extremely fast when the market opens. So now that we've got Nike out of the way, of course, Nike also a retailer that might give us a bit more information with regards to the likes of Amazon, but also others out there as well. Now, before we jump into Amazon, if you like this type of videos, leave it a thumbs up, subscribe if you have not. And of course, I want to thank every one of you that have been subscribing lately. We're over 23,000 subscribers. So thank you very much. And if you want to support me and this channel, do check out the link down in the description and in the pinned comment to get the top 10 best stocks to buy now or go to full.com for slash couch investor. Make sure to check out all the other links in the pinned comment as well. And I appreciate everyone that does it. It really does help the channel. So Amazon. The stock is down around 49% for the year. Revenues for the last 12 months are just over half a trillion dollars. Now, although that number sounds, well, incredibly crazy, as you can see, free cash flow, not that great, negative $26 billion in the last 12 months. Return on equity, just 8.7%, not great. Gross profit margin is at 43%. Now, from a PE growth standpoint in the next 12 months, we're sitting at 2.53, which is okay. Could go lower, of course, but then again, it needs to be a bit more profitable. But if you look at the price to sales standpoint, we're at 1.6 times, extremely, extremely low. I don't think we've seen that so low since well before AWS was announced. Now, of course, we can talk about, well, go with price to sales, go with PE. But right now, of course, going with price to sales makes a bit more sense. Let's see what happens in the coming years. Because right now, as we've talked about before, we know that Alexa is losing them tens of billions of dollars each and every year. We know that they over invested during the pandemic. They're cutting back on that, laying off employees as well. So cost cuts are being done. Let's see what the results will be in the coming quarters. So now let's jump into some new investor notes, some new price targets, upgrades and downgrades as well. So first up with regards to the e-commerce side, so Wells Fargo put out a note here. So in his view, while the e-commerce channel has been giving back some of its COVID-19 penetration pull forward, he expects to have rounded the corner and channel trajectories and that the e-commerce and stores channels to start reverting to pre-COVID trends. Fitzgerald also notes that Amazon's GMV 
is beginning to reaccelerate as Softline comes slow, while Amazon's move to sublease warehouse capacity and delay some new warehouse builds earlier in the year might have been viewed as a reduction in competitive intensity against the backdrop of decelerating post-pandemic e-commerce growth, the analyst has also seen indication of Amazon leveraging capacity to go on offense and expand its third-party footprint via Buy with Prime announced in April. And just as an FYI, e-commerce sales only make up right now around 15% of all retail sales, even after that huge push from the pandemic. So there's still a long way to go. Then we have a price target cut from JP Morgan going from $145 to $130. The analyst reduced estimates for Amazon's web services, revenue decelerating and margin compression during a challenging macro environment. Everscore also cut their price target from $170 to $150, keeps an outperform rating on the shares though. He is lowering his fiscal year 23 and 24 revenue estimates by 4 and 5% respectively, and his fiscal year 23 and 24 operating income estimates by 9 and 8%, putting his forecast below the street in the wake of several proprietary data points that suggest ongoing softness in online retail and cloud computing demand. However, he continues to view Amazon as highly attractive for long-term investors. And last couple of things here. First up, we have a report that says that Apple has dropped out of the race for the NFL Sunday ticket, which could be a huge boost if the likes of Amazon could get that. Now, Alexander also says that it's down to Amazon and Google and that Disney ESPN has exited the bidding too. Then we have a positive announcement with regards to AWS. They were awarded $723.88 million for a five-year single award deal from the Department of Navy with regards to enterprise software license. And last thing here that was with regards to the antitrust issues in Europe. So the European Commission has made commitments offered by Amazon.com legally binding under European Union antitrust rules. Amazon's commitment addressed the commission's competition concerns over Amazon's use of non-public marketplace seller data and over a possible bias in granting to sellers access to its buy box and its prime program. The commission found that Amazon's final commitments will ensure that Amazon does not use marketplace seller data for its own retail operations and that it grants non-discriminatory access to buy box and prime. The commission decided to make them legally binding on Amazon. The offered commitments cover all Amazon's current and future marketplaces in the European economic area. If Amazon were to breach the commitments, the commission could impose a fine of up to 10% of Amazon's total annual turnover without having to find an infringement of EU antitrust rules or a periodic penalty of 5% per day of Amazon's daily turnover for every day of non-compliance. I always find these types of, well, deals, let's say, pretty interesting because there's always going to be some compromise from both sides. Also, when you talk about anti-competitiveness, I was surprised that, well, nobody in Europe actually cares about the monopoly that Apple has, especially with regards to its App Store. Maybe that will change soon, but I don't really have get my hopes up. Now, last thing is another win, I would say, for AWS. So Yahoo selects AWS as its preferred public cloud provider for its ad tech business. So it was announced that Yahoo has selected AWS as its preferred public cloud provider for its advertising technology business, Yahoo Ad Tech. Building on its long-time relationship with AWS, Yahoo Ad Tech is migrating all of its advertising technology workloads, including its media buying and supply side platform, analytics and identity solutions and products from its on-premise data centers to AWS. So in my opinion, another big win for AWS and this just shows Amazon's well strength, especially when it comes to AWS but its knowledge in the advertising business. It built out AWS, kept on learning and learning and learning as we've seen in the past couple of quarters, right? Amazon's advertising business is growing extremely fast as well. And in my opinion, still extremely, extremely underrated and underappreciated. Now, of course, Yahoo is one thing, Amazon's advertising is another thing, but I do feel that they're learning throughout the years. 
And so to me, it's pretty simple. Amazon is my second biggest holding. I'll keep on adding whenever I can. I think Amazon is a tremendous business trading at less than two times sales. Of course, you can look at a PE growth ratio, but to me right now, it doesn't make any sense. I would like to see more profitability in 2023. That's for sure. And obviously, do share your thoughts down in the comments below. If you enjoy this type of videos, leave it a thumbs up. If you haven't subscribed to this channel, maybe hit that subscribe button and I'll see you all in the next one. Bye-bye.